Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hey everyone, it's Tracy and Monica on the New Trust Economy, and Monica has had a really exciting couple of weeks. There's been so many events in New York uh, <laughs> surrounding blockchain, and I miss them all because, as you can hear, I'm a little sick. Um, but I also just could, I thought I was going to come in for just a day, but that actually ended up just being crazy, and the weather was so bad anyway. So I didn't make it. But you, yeah, well, bless your heart. Good for you. Well, good call. You did yeah. not come in for a day because even that day, it was just, it felt like, so, you know, this started as consensus, right? It was, and then it became consensus week. And then it became so many things that weren't even like in or near or around consensus where you're it's running sounding like South by Southwest, Southwest all over. It, yeah. It became blockchain week. And then it's like, not consensus is just like got swallowed up by a blockchain week. And it's like, I mean, I had, um, I, at least three different sp spreadsheets shared with me. And on those spreadsheets were, I think, between 87 and 100 and some rows. And each row was an event. Oh and each gosh. day had like 15 to 25 events. And they had like place, time, date, free or not free, event break link, where to buy tickets, when to explore. I mean, just on and on and on and on and on. So you... I had people that were like, okay, let's divide and conquer. I'll take the first seven, you take the second seven. <laughs> it was just insane. So I I did go to blockchain week. I don't remember all of it clearly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so why and that's was that? <laughs> why was that? What was going on? It was just, it so was just too, too much. Yeah, I mean, it started, the first event I went to, and that's because I skipped some stuff Wednesday, was the Thursday before consensus started, which consensus started Sunday. So Thursday before Sunday of the beginning of con consensus was the beginning of the real madness, like standard hotel, this and that's happening. What was that event? I forget. Then Friday, there were more. Saturday, there were more. Then especially nighttime events. I decided, and I was like looking for a press pass. I was going to get a media pass. I was going to get in for free through someone else or this and that and whatever. And finally, I was just like, I wouldn't have time to go to consensus even if I had a pass. There's just no way I can do it. There was too many things. So it was all of the other parties that were right next to there and, you know, being at the bar right downstairs. That's where everybody's talking anyway. I mean, I realized I don't need to be taught anything new about blockchain. And if I'm not on stage teaching it, then that's not of value to me. But sitting next to someone talking to them, well, I would just be disrupting the talk anyway. So I might as well just go and focus on the networking events afterwards, which was my, has always been my strategy with most really big conferences. Like I'm, if you're there for the content, you're too, really new to the space. But if you already know the space, you don't need the content, you need the people. So why get, it's like this weirdest ball yarn. So I was so just like every friend. event afterwards I was at. Yeah, so my good friend, I we we have this networking event called Fuel that I absolutely adore, and his name's Ed Kastner, and he's in like celebrity insurance, so like you know, like anyone who has like so high ticket that you've got to insure their leg or something like that. That's what he does. Anyway, oh he's my like, god, he literally like insures Cindy Crawford's ankles or something, yeah, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. Like he finds ways to insure stuff that's not insurable any other way. So and so anyway, yeah, for top celebrities and sports figures and things like that. Anyway, it's really cool, but. This is actually uh, just on our mentorship call that we had this past uh, month. He said that exact same thing that he recommends, you know, because some of these sports events, when you're looking to get clients and you're in that industry, they're so expensive or they're so exclusive that you can't get in, but you can get into the bar in the lobby and meet exactly. everyone because that's where they're going to hang out because they don't want to go to the talk either. And so, yep. yeah, so perfect strategy. So great that you suggested that because- I mean, I think it is daunting. Someone goes, wow, look at the price. I don't even remember what the price for consensus was, but it was high. I thought it was really high for what it is. Yeah. And even for like startup founders, there was a, I got a discount code and everything else. And after I did this and that, and if I promised my firstborn to whatever, it's still going to be $1,100. I was like, 
for the startup founders? Really? You guys. Well, and if you're coming right. in from out of town, it's expensive in New York to oh stay. My God. So you already have flight and hotel and it's expensive. So yeah, yeah that yeah. makes it. So I think that these kinds of events, they do themselves a disservice and they're yeah. inviting this kind of circulation to happen around them that is eating at their, their um, attendees anyway. Yeah. And you know, it's fine because the attendees that go, I mean, we're in like the fintech capital of the world or whatever. So there's lots of people that know financial technology in the broad sense. And blockchain is this new aspect that they're like, oh, and they need it. That's great. People can come here and expect to get that. And that's fine. But for the rest of us that already, Festivus for the rest of us does not happen in the actual conference, you know? So yeah, there were just, but and I'm talking about these spreadsheets were full of all of the other events. Yeah. We all knew the one event that we already knew where that was, what, okay, that one, yeah, how much it costs. Nobody has to put that anywhere. But it was like everything else was literally, I would say almost a hundred, maybe even over a hundred other events. Wow. that were happening, including all day conferences. I spoke at ASD token, which was a conference just for real estate and blockchain. Um, we had general assemblymen there. We had, you know, people from the state and local government there, as well as like all these different founders, myself included investors, and then people that were doing like tax and accounting, but they've just started to get into blockchain and they realize they can do tax and accounting for people that are doing blockchain meets real estate. And I mean, just all kinds of people. So there were some, there were full, you know, full day, other conferences that were in direct competition or were happening just after consensus closed as another as another conference completely. And there were also just like three hours here and there, like Cadena and Republic and oh, I feel so bad. I forget the third company. But there were three companies that got together, rented out a place in Midtown, a bar, uh, the upstairs, and then just put it on Eventbrite, made it free for lots of people. If you were like super slacker last minute, you probably had to pay five or 15 bucks or something, but come in, open bar. I met so many cool people there. And Kadena is like close, near and dear to my heart. I love Monica, the founder. We have a Monica connection, of course. <laughs> and Andrew is their uh, head of growth and he's just been amazing. And I just, I love those guys. So I'll, of course, I'm always going to support them. But then Republic, I didn't know a lot about, and they're an amazing, um, fundraising platform actually for private equity and other things. And so actually they, they might be helping my company with some of our raise. That's my next call actually. So I'm very excited. I made some yeah. great connections, but it was all of the happy hours. Like none of this stuff was going to happen while I sat in the conference or even necessarily down at the bar. But it was like, if a company who's really cool is throwing an event or it's in their space, you know that they'll be there. That's where you meet them. That's where the good stuff happens. So, wow. yeah, so, comes of that. so now your talk, what was your talk about? Tell us a little bit about that. Because it was a panel, right? Yeah, I was on a panel. I was I was invited to speak at a couple of different things, but the main one was at ASD Token. I was on a panel about regulation. So mm. I was there with a general assemblyman. I forget his name. Oops, sorry, dude. Um, and <laughs> another a, a lawyer who's in the crypto blockchain space. So what are they uh, saying about regulation? Well, um, basically there has not been, a, I mean, there are a lot of regulations that already exist that allow you to issue securities that, um, to, and to publicly solicit and all those things. There, there are plenty of specifics around that. It's all been de- de- detailed. So to make your security backed by real estate is the only leap there. And that's not, it, the, the law doesn't prevent it. Yeah. at all. It's just that um, historically it's been expensive and there hasn't been a lot of reason to bring those prices down. And now there's suddenly more demand because people are doing what I'm doing. Um, and so we talked a bit about retail investors, what this does for financial inclusion. And I'm, of course, that's like my, that my big soapbox and not everybody really cares. A lot of people are like, oh, the money's to be made in with accredited investors. And that's true. They have more money to invest. Sure. Right. But I just think, did Coca-Cola teach us anything that <laughs> like put a smile on a billion people's faces? You'll be a billionaire put a smile on a million people's faces who already have a lot of alternatives like accredited investors, maybe you'll make your millions, but it might be easier in the short run, but how are you actually changing the world? So I, I just was the, the voice of that on the panel and um, it was well received because I think that's just something everybody's like, yeah, why can't everybody invest in solid, good investments? And there are regulations around it um, and you have to just play by the rules, but those rules are going to be not even challenged, but just fleshed out to be more accessible in the same way that the lawyers who are charging hand over fist to make a, a regulations, you know, compliant offering to accredited or unaccredited investors. They're making tons of money right now. Well, as more and more people come into the space, it's going to drive that price down. And right. that's incredible because as soon as we have a smart contract for plug this in, click here, it's, it's now compliant. It goes over here. It gets, you put, you te- put technology behind it. I'm sorry, that service vendor, which is all a lawyer is, is a service vendor. 
sorry, they're going to have to compete with technology and that means they're going to get a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. I'm excited for what this is going to do. The regulations don't have to change, but technology is changing the whole ecosystem around those regulations. And I love it. So. Well, and you know, that's, that's actually the point that I was making when I was on Larry King is like, it's like, we can't fight that our generation and the next generation after us, we're all very comfortable here. Right. So you're not going to have a choice. It's going to come along or, we're, or an alternative is just going to pop in. Right. So why fight it? Just go with it. Right. Exactly. And it's nice to see, you know, tax and accounting firms and the, the lawyers that I actually, the lawyers are near and dear to my heart that are actually in blockchain. And they realize that this is, this is an important thing for the people and that, that it is going to change their job. And that is for the better. And so they might as well get on the ball and start writing those smart contracts and getting involved in this technology rather than just resisting it. It's really refreshing to see. So whether they're real estate brokerages that are like, oh, maybe things are going to change here, huh? We're not just going to own 6% of every transaction that goes on in this entire industry. Like, no, you're not. Not for much longer, guys. So don't be scared. Calm down. Put your big boy pants on. Just make it work. <laughs> yeah. And like figure out what you're going to do with yourself and adapt. So the people that are adapting, love them. The people that aren't adapting, it's okay. They'll be obsolete soon enough anyway. <laughs> well, you know, there's this is some things that I think... You know, how do you go about and network at these events? Because, you know, it's, it, it feels a little pushy sometimes to be like, oh, I'm talking about my thing. So right. how do you go about that? I think that's really important for people who, you know what I mean? You're going to come into these like random spreadsheet meetups that you just don't know right. anyone at, right? So but nobody you likes it. networking. Like yeah. you have to remember that nobody likes it. And so everyone's going like, Hey, what do you, what do you do? Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. All right, what do you, let's talk about it some more. I love this. It's like, if, and everybody's kind of trying to get through it. And if you can just, you know, I think it's all just a matter of being human about it. And I lean very heavily on self-deprecating humor because I think if you're not laughing at yourself, you're missing out on some of the best material you'll ever run into, you know? <laughs> and if you're laughing at yourself, then you're, at least you can try to get people laughing at something and it's safe because no one's going to feel like they're the butt of the joke if you make right. yourself. So, you know, if you feel like it's foolish to be there, you can be the fool that you talk about, you know, like it's fine. And that's kind of just my people networking skills 101. Also, I, what I hate, what was made it challenging and what always makes it challenging for me, at least, is that almost all of these, no, I'd say every single one of these events had alcohol, which is fine. Except when you're on day nine <laughs> of blockchain week or even day seven or day four, like four solid days of like three, four events each, one drink at each one. And that's if you're keeping it to a major minimum and you don't get caught up in talking with someone and it's a good thing you want to be talking to people. I mean, just add alcohol. I get why though that's at, at events and I get why people drink, myself included. It makes, it turns an introvert into an extrovert. It makes everybody loosen up. It makes talking easier. It's just so taxing after a while. And the problem is networking is not a deep thing to do. It's not you show up sober and you like a meditation retreat or a fucking yoga retreat and like <laughs> you walk out feeling engaged and like we're all kumbaya. Like you're not, you're doing business. You know, this is only a small part of your life. It's not, it's not a holistic endeavor typically. So it's not a holistic networking or even a message. So to keep it down that focus, I think you have to, and well, then they, they construct these events so you can use chemicals to do it better. And it <laughs> just becomes hard. I mean, you can't even like replace it with weed and be like, now I feel extra. No, I, now I feel like talking to my belly button. Like I don't do <laughs> well on weed, you know, and I can't stay sober around that many people like this on, 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 on. Like I've got to do something to like pull myself out of my shell and be able to handle that much stimulus and just numbing the nerves a little really helps. Yeah. It's, I think, oh man, that was the hard part though. Like day four, I'm talking to my colleagues cause I have a distributed team I'm talking to my guy in California. He's like, okay. Cause we had a, we had a, a standard way to do this. I was going to talk to people, get their cards, write a couple of notes on them. Like here we got Friedman LLP, Seth Martin. What do I put speaking slash consulting? All right. I made a couple notes. I run into the bathroom every few cards, take pictures, text them to my, uh, to my assistant, my one right hand guy. And then he populates a spreadsheet and then he follows up, has access to my email and sends them follow-up emails the next day. That's the only way we could do it. There's no way I was going to wake up and send follow-up emails after I was up making the contacts all night. Like 
not that gonna was happen. So, oh, it's so good for you. You had a follow up system already in place and plan. Had to, had right? to. Otherwise, it would have just been a pile of cards. And by the end, I'd be like, I don't remember any of these people. Right. You, you know? don't remember what you're supposed to send them or anything. I I know. Same way. So we had we use HubSpot. Like that's our, oh. our CRM. And so you can scan the card straight in there and set it up right then and there. And so I can, so when I am doing it, I can enroll them straight into an email trail. If I ha if it's more automated, you know, cause sometimes I, when I do a lot of speaking, you get a lot of people who are like, Oh, I just want to know all about your process. Okay. Drop Here's them into an email chain. And so right. I can just do that quickly. Um, so that doesn't involve team at all. Um, and that that's really great. Wow. And then the other that's ones I can, I can tag and, and set myself a reminder to follow up on something specific so that an alert will come up, you know, three days after the event or something. Is, I do is HubSpot find, free? Um, no, um, it costs. And we have mm -hmm. like a really high level plan now because of what we've been doing. But, um, but it, it's not, I think it, at the end of the day, when we, when we were doing it, it cost us less than, than um, Infusionsoft and ClickFunnels put together. So, wow. yeah, so, okay. it, you know, so for us, that was worth it at the, even the early stage when you don't have a lot of contacts in there. Okay. Not to just like derail off into <laughs> CRM management, but kind of, so Infusionsoft, I've used it before, previous business, really came to hate it. And then I found out that Entreport had come along and just kind of kicked Infusionsoft's ass. And Entreport was this like way easier, high touch process for email marketing. Have you yeah. tried Entreport? I have not. I used Infusionsoft for a while. You know, there's a reason they call it Confusionsoft. And, um, and we just were like, what was really happening in the, and the, the difference of many of these CRM softwares, when you run an automated email trail through them, that you get a low open rate because yeah. the systems like Gmail and other things can't trap them and know that that's where yep. it's coming from. With HubSpot, we had a higher open rate and that's why it was recommended to us because oh. you technically are doing it personally, even though it's coming through an automated System, right like tracking system and so that's why um it's that worked really well sense. for us yeah so it looks like you personally sent it it look, doesn't look like it's got all that funky code yeah. um and so people are more likely to open it and so we've had a much higher open rate so that's why we yeah. switched but having also some of these other features of being able to follow up and set a reminder to follow up because that's what i you know the other thing i wanted to say is that i find sometimes when you send an email right after the evening especially when you're that everyone's traveling and it's an event that's going on for days on end that they don't respond back just because you get lost in the like path yeah, of it gets lost. Come caught up. So I usually set a date going, okay, if I give them a week and a half, that should be exactly the right thing. But at least I remembered exactly what I was going to say. So it's not this generic, yeah. like, why did we connect like a week and a half later? So I, yeah. I put it in, but I follow up and has set a time for that follow up so that I know they're likely to be free of that. Mass yeah, that yeah. yeah, I actually, I, so for me, because I'm trying to raise and I have to look like I'm so on top of it, right. I really, <laughs> I will follow up. My guy was following up for me within 24 hours. And then we were just re following up a week later. Hey, just wanted to let you know, like, it was great to meet you. Da, da, da. I realized it was crazy. And now you've had two touches with the person. That's perfect. Not just one. Yeah. And as a, a person in the middle of a race, I'm like, okay, I've got to like, and it's just, it's the same as like Memorial Day. You know, people were like, are you going to take the day off? I'm like, if an investor wants to meet with me, I'm going to take the meeting. They're, they might even just yeah. be, you know, kind of testing me to be like, are you going to take days off or not? It's like, right. okay, I don't so, know if I'm taking days off. So one of the other things that I've been doing, which is pretty, uh, is consistent, that has really worked. When you're going to one of these large events where you can't guarantee you're going to meet people because you right. everybody distributes out, you're not sure they're going to show up at this particular you know, talk or event or mixer yeah. or whatever's going on. When you get a schedule of speakers, what I do is I go down it and I just, I LinkedIn match to them. So I friend them on LinkedIn and I connect with them and say, Hey, I'm going to be at the same event. I'm speaking on a different panel, but I thought we, you know, we should get to know each other. Hopefully we'll actually bump into each other at, you know, one of these mixers or whatever. So I've done that plant way ahead of time. All of them connect. And then what I found is when you get to the event, they actually are looking for you. Yeah. Yeah. And because they now know what you look like because your picture on LinkedIn or whatever, then they're more That's likely different. to find you. Yeah. And so when you're at one of these mixers, you're actually connecting with the, some of the top level people because they would be invited to speak if they weren't. And so yeah. they seek you out. And so that's been working really well for me. And I've been doing that a couple of years now. Um, and that's probably part of how you got so hoarse. <laughs> it is. I, 
No, I, you know, this is a combination of running myself ragged and this is a lesson to everyone. And so I'm actually, I really, it was a good thing I skipped New York. I would have been, oh yeah, I would have been, you know, walking pneumonia right now. Yeah, you would. Yeah. I'm amazed I haven't gotten sick. I mean, my my lymph nodes are a little swollen, but I'm taking, I started taking (laughs) vitamin C during blockchain week. I was like, okay, vitamin C time the whole time, taking zinc the whole time. I'm like popping pills while drinking alcohol. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's just vitamin C, I promise. <laughs> and wipes in your bag, constantly wiping after all the handshaking. Yep. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's, re- let's cap this with, you know, what, what surprised you? What did you learn? Was there anything that you were like, wow, this is coming. I'm interested. I want to learn more about. Well, what, what people that were saying at this event and consistently across the board, and it's pretty, I think it's kind of common sense, but everybody's been saying it like it's new. They're like, oh, it wasn't like last year. Last year was this frenzy of people that were like, I see this and this and that and da, 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 like, you know, insanity over the newest details about like the first way we can deal with financial technology, which is mega currency, you know? And now it's like, you've had 12 months to build something. What are you building? Let's talk about regulation. Like last year, there's nobody wanting to talk about regulation. Also, the SEC hadn't really issued much around security tokens or anything else. So we didn't know what they thought and they didn't know what to think and they hadn't said anything. So it's like, there's no conversation to have. We were just sitting there going, you feel like talking guys? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Until then, we're going to like do a bunch of stuff that we don't know if you're going to like it or not. Now we're getting some dialogue. Now we're actually seeing people at the state and, and you know, local and even federal level engage in the conversation and not being like, we're not sure yet. Get back to us later. We'll be back. We'll let you know when we you know, tell you something. And it's like, that's not helpful. Yeah. So now it feels like things are more mature. There's actual, like people are making platforms. They've made platforms. They're, they know the jurisdictions they need to be in. It's not like, oh, we'll just go to Malta. Oh, just run off offshore. It's like it, it sounded so scammy, even though it was really just, we don't know what else to do. You guys haven't told us what's okay. It just sounds like you're all pretty scared that we're like, we're about to break the law and we don't even know what the law is. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's gotten a lot better, I think. So so now we're starting to have some real business conversations. We're starting yeah. to have some real regulation. Actual business case. Yeah. Instead of just like, oh, blockchain case. Like, no, business case using blockchain, not blockchain case finding a business. You know? Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's yeah. really positive. And that's part of the reason why we, you know, we have this podcast and what we're doing here, because we really wanted to make sure that, you know, we bring to light these business cases and what's going on and where things are moving rather than talking about it in speculative terms. Yeah, like what's working, what's happening out there. So great. Well, I hope you're going to get some more interviews of some people you met along the way. I've seen some I pop did. up on our calendar already. So people. Yeah, yeah it's cool. So it was super gonna fun. And actually, I have a lot of people that are in the pipeline that are like, ooh, okay, I have our cards. So I was handing those out to people. Yeah, yeah so. I've had a couple of interesting conversations that I've gotten. We've gotten a lot of reach out internationally. So we've been, gotten a lot of um, uh, blockchain projects that are going on in other countries that have reached out to us to you, uh, come on the show. So that's really interesting. We're getting such international circulation right now. Yeah, um, so I'm excited about some of those conversations that are coming up. I did a follow-up with Dr. Larry Sanger from Everpedia. Had a really fascinating, he's such a philosopher. Like I loved it. So that will probably have aired before this episode. So if you didn't catch that, go back and listen to that one because it was really <laughs> cool. Um, and, it, you know, just his reasoning for joining Everpedia and working on another encyclopedia was so cool. So oh, cool. anyway, so yeah. And I know you've got a lot of really great conversations coming up. So, so yeah. everyone stay tuned. We're going to keep bringing you more. Yeah. Thanks a lot, you guys. This is Monica and Tracy signing off on the New Trust Economy. You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.